Hey everyone, welcome to the second video for section 2.6. In this video, we're going to be talking about um, how to actually solve exact equations. So we're going to take the definition of last time that we had for exact equations, and we're going to go forward and solve it for the right function we need and figure out how we can actually, you know, solve these ODEs just using the general method. Um, we'll see as we go through this, this is actually another method that would be called by direct integration because it just involves doing integrals, which you know how to do from earlier calculus classes and using that to get our answer. So let's go ahead and jump on in and see what I mean by all that. So we're going to start with what we had for exact equation from last time. So assume we have the ODE m of xy plus n of xy dy dx equals zero with our exactness condition that m y equals nx. And what we want to do is we want to try to find the function psi that we need for the, for the exactness condition from before. So we want to find this function psi. So we want, so we know we want that um, psi x equals m. This is a condition we want to have satisfied by our function. So let's just take m, integrate in x, and set that to be psi. So psi is going to be the integral of m of x, y, dx. It's just an antiderivative. Plus, now, if we we're doing this normally, this would be a constant. But in this case, because we're, we have a function of two variables, x and y, and we're integrating in x, we are allowed to have a constant that depends on y. So I'm going to write here h of y. And the point is, if I take this function, Okay, so this is what you would want to write. However, this is bad notation because psi is a function of x and y and I have x is in integrals and x is outside. So how you should really write this, this is this is more than what you're trying to do, but how you should really write this is this. You want to have psi of x, y be an integral of m of s, y, ds plus h of y, where this integral is going from 0 to x, say. This is really what you want, but you, if you want to just do the version above, you're just thinking of taking an antiderivative in terms of x. But if you want to actually write out the actual formula that you're looking at, it's this one, it's the second one down here. So now if I take the x derivative of this function, what do I see? Well, I see psi x on this side, obviously. And I go forward here. Fundamental theorem of calculus tells me the x derivative of this guy is just m of x, y. And this term vanishes. So we're good. We found a function where psi x equals m of x y. Now we want to also have that psi y equals n. Now for convenience sake, I'm going to call this function here q of x y. So the expression looks a little neater. I'm just going to call that q of x, y, right? When you solve these equations, you would actually be calculating that explicitly. You'd be given m, you would take an integral, and you would see what you get. So you would have this function q of x, y. So now I want that um, psi y is equal to n, which means I want n of x, y to equal what? The y derivative of this side. So partial q partial y plus h prime of y. Now, in order for this to work, I'm supposed to find what h is. If I can find h, then I'm all set, which means I want to be able to solve h prime of y equals n of x y equals n of x y minus partial q, partial y of x, y. Now, if I am to solve this equation, I better have that this right-hand side only depends on y. If there's any x is still floating around, then I can't do this. So how do I check if something is independent of x? Well, I take its x derivative and see that I get 0. So can this be solved? Yes, because if I take the x derivative, of n of x, y minus dq, dy, I get 
nx of x, y minus, and now I'm going to switch the order of integration differentiation. So I get d dy of dq dx of x, y. But we know what dq dx is. And that's from right above. dq dx was m. That's how we defined this equation. So this turns into nx of x, y minus m, y of x, y. And we know that zero because our equation was exact. So that means, so this fact here means that this is actually some function f of y, which means now I can solve for h just by integration. So then h of y equals some antiderivative of that function f, and then psi of x, y is q of x, y plus h of y does the job. Now, all of that kind of looks like nonsense, right? It looks kind of messy, it looks kind of awful in general, but when you see it actually all put together in an actual problem, it's not too bad. It's only really bad when you're trying to work out the general idea of doing the proof, but doing it for actual problems is not too bad. So we're going to do one of those so you can see that it's really not that bad to put together. It's actually the same problem that we looked at um, last video. So example, um, 4x plus 6xy plus 3x squared dy dx equals 0. I want to find the function psi that corresponds to this equation. So what do I have? I have m of xy equals 4x plus 6xy. Now I want to integrate that in x. So I get that my q of xy equals 2x squared plus 3x squared y. If you're not sure how I got that, come talk to me and let me know. That should be pretty clear. So what does this mean? This means I want my psi of xy is going to be 2x squared plus 3x squared y plus some function h of y. And so then psi y is going to be just 3x squared plus h prime of y. And I want this to equal 3x squared, because that's what n is up above. So this tells me h prime of y equals 0. h of y is a constant. And so my psi of xy function, I can assume the constant is 0, because I'm going to put a constant on the other side anyway, is just 2x squared plus 3x squared y. Which, as we said last time, means my integral curves are of the form 2x squared plus 3x squared y equals a constant. And that gives me a way to find my um, stream function, this psi function. So while the proof above looked awful, it's really not too bad to do in practice. All right, so there's the out, there is the sort of setup for how we actually find this function psi to correspond to exact equation. Um, I'll give you one example to work on for the worksheet that's going to be finding one of these psi's. Um, and then in the next class, we'll do another trick you can use to solve other equations that may not quite be exact, but you can make them exact by a certain adjustment. So I'll get that problem for you right now. And there's that problem for you. So I want you to find the function psi that corresponds to this equation. This equation is exact. If it's not, then I've done something wrong, but this equation is exact. So you should be able to find the function psi that corresponds to it. Um, so take a look at that. Follow the same method we did above. It's probably easier if you follow the example as opposed to following the actual proof because the actual proof looks annoying. There's a lot of functions flying around. But when you have an explicit example, it's a lot easier to see what you're supposed to do. All right, so take a look at that. Fill that out on the worksheet. And the next video will go on to something that's kind of tricky and kind of annoying, but it's integrating factors for exact equations. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.